With all the geopolitical headlines drawing our attention overseas, our biggest concern could be developing right under our nose. China investment in the Caribbean is on the rise big time and at an astounding pace. The most recent numbers show China investing over $62 billion into the Caribbean uh, in 2012. Many watching the situation argue that America's answer could be to open up business to Cuba. But over the weekend, we saw this. Vladimir Putin in Cuba, making nice with former leader Fidel Castro. How concerned should we be about this? KT McFarland is former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense. Todd Schoenberg is still with us as well. KT, interesting photo there of Fidel Castro yeah. and Vladimir Putin meeting. He's everywhere. Uh, look, we ought to be very concerned because Cuba is right on our doorstep. We used to have the Monroe Doctrine, which says we don't want any other big powers in our hemisphere. Um, Secretary Biden last fall just unilaterally declared the Monroe Doctrine was dead. And as a result, you're now seeing China trying to buy a lot of positions in the region. Russia and Putin, guess who was in his entourage? The head of his oil company. Mm. So what did Putin do? He got off the checkbook and he said, Cuba, I forgive you this huge loan. Mm. Uh, secondly, we're going to invest in your offshore drilling, your offshore oil Sneaky. companies. And let's make nice. And, and here's why we care. because. The Castro brothers are old. They're going to eventually die. Mm -hmm. And when they die, there is going to be a new regime, a new government, potentially a new opportunity. Whichever big country is in there first, um, doing economic development, doing trade deals with them, that's the country that's going to have a major presence and help in position in building Cuba. Now, how are we going to feel if it's a big port in Cuba where there are Chinese military craft there or Russian military craft? Remember the Cuban Missile Crisis? Remember all the times we worried about a foreign military presence immediately on our doorstep? This is it. All right, so China's investing in Cuba. Vladimir Putin showing up in Cuba, right. talking to Fidel Castro. What does the U.S. do here? Do we open up business to Cuba? I would be in there so fast. Look, I'm a hawk. I'm an anti-communist, Cold War, Cold Warrior hawk. I believe, however, that we need to be the first country in Cuba and in a major presence because otherwise we're going to have to compete, and we don't want to have to compete after the fact with China and Russia. China, for example, is build, they're building a new Panama Canal, except it's going to be through Nicaragua. Guess who's footing the bill for that? China. Mm. Both countries, both Russia and China, understand the importance of a presence and a toehold in, in the Western Hemisphere. And Putin, as a sort of added gift with purchase, he's saying, look, America, you think you want to be on my border in Ukraine and in a former Soviet Union countries? I can be right under your nose, too, and make life very difficult for you. So if you're thinking of putting sanctions on in 48 hours, think twice. That's right. And you bring up a brilliant point about the Castro brothers and what's going to happen. Listen, it's great for your viewers to know this. You don't create power, you take power. So if that's going to be the case with a new regime in Cuba, you can see Putin moving in. What's that mean for the Chinese when they go into the Caribbean, when they're buying? And, we, you know, we're just talking about international interests. You also have a Chinese, uh, you have it's a lot of foreign investors coming in, foreign investments coming into this country on the real estate side. So we also have to take that into consideration. Keep in mind, in, in South Beach, Miami, you had two-thirds of all cash buyers this year were Russian. Think about that. Mm. You have more foreign investors coming in, and plus you also look about look around what's taking place in Cuba and the Caribbean. We've got Catherine Rooney-Vera on the phone with us as well. Catherine, I want you to get in on this conversation, uh, talking Vladimir Putin showing up in Cuba, China investing uh, in Cuba. Uh, w what do you see as the next steps here? Hi, Sandra. Yes, yeah, certainly this is meant to undercut the U.S. and broadly the West. I mean, Putin is trying to build up a powerful lefty socialist coalition of the willing um, to oppose um, the U.S., the U.N., the World Bank, the IMF. I mean, we can see that in, currently he's there in Brazil um, at the BRICS summit, and that's precisely meant to substitute those exact institutions. So I think this is an end to kind of put another um, power in on the global sphere um, with this new coalition of with including yeah. Latin America. And not to mention, uh, Catherine, that th this Cuba stop was just one mm -hmm. on right. uh, uh, many of Vladimir Putin's stop on his Latin American tour. Uh, we're also talking about Argentina here. 
Yes. He saw Cuba, including Nicaragua, as was mentioned, that's a, a place where China's building the canal. So one wonders if he's a, a silent partner there. Argentina, Brazil, multiple agreements signed with all of those countries. Um, no, most noteworthy on the energy front, nuclear energy, um, oil exploration off the coast of Cuba. So certainly it's a geopolitical interest, and we also see an economic interest as well. And Vladimir Putin, KT, very, very confident. We're running the banner right now of his relationship, Russia's relationship with China. That could be a dominant force, one that sure. the U.S. is going to have to deal with. And this is what, for the last 40 years of American foreign policy, our desire has been to separate the two. And that was the great achievement of Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon, put a split between the two. If these guys are dating again with the possibility of getting married, this is a very serious problem. And before we go, KT, I want to get your latest uh, on the developments uh, in Israel. Uh, we had you on yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been talking from an investment standpoint that this market seems to be shrugging off uh, what's happening over there. But what do you think about the latest developments? Yeah, you know, this is a long cycle of violence. They go at it every couple of years. Israel ultimately prevails. I think, though, that the bigger problem is that every time you do this cycle of Israeli-Palestinian, Israeli-Palestinian, the weapons get more lethal. My concern is, is twofold. One, that the other fighting in the Middle East, Iraq, Syria, potentially spreads to the, to the Israeli region and Israel's, Israel's neighbors. And secondly, that what are the other thing, major thing that's happening right now, we've got negotiations in Geneva over Iran's nuclear program, and they're failing. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the markets will certainly be at least watching that, That's not right. so much reacting to that right now. Uh, I want to thank you all, KT McFarland, mm -hmm. for joining us this morning. Catherine Rooney Vera, senior macroeconomic strategist and partner at Boltec Capital Markets. Todd, you're going to stay with me. Got it.